thank you for joining me today at Resource Data Management. In this video, I will be showing you how to gain access to a 740 series controller through the front keypad using a series of key presses in order to change and view parameters and set the controller up to connect to a DM touch. Let's begin. In order to gain access to the parameter list on the 740 controller, you're going to want to press two buttons at the same time on the front display. And that would be the top left hand corner button, which is the enter button, and the bottom right hand corner button, which is the down arrow. And I'll display that now. If you press these buttons in at the same time for three seconds, it'll change to enter. At that point, you want to press the top left hand button to enter the menu. Okay, now that you've hit enter, you'll see IO listed as your first selection. Uh, this is one of the first places you're going to want to visit. This is where you'll be able to see the status of your inputs and outputs. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see there's a number indicating what point it is. Uh, I am going to attach the table that will show you what those inputs are. Uh, the ones you'll need to pay attention to for setting up for an EEP, EET, etc. To check the status of that input, just hit enter again and it'll show you what the value is. In this example, I do not have anything landed on this controller. so. You won't see anything in this particular screen, but you can. this is where you would see a temperature if there was a sensor landed on it. So we'll go ahead and hit enter again, and it'll take you to the, the point. We're going to go ahead and arrow down to hit ESC, which is to escape, and we'll go ahead and enter again, and then we're back out to the main menu. Uh, there will be a, a table attached between these two sections to indicate what those um, status points will be. In this section, I'll be showing you how to connect a 740 series controller to a DM touch using DHCP and IDs. There are two ways you can connect the 740 series controller to a network. One is through the DM touch as a DHCP enabled device, and the other way is through a static IP address on the network. In most cases, you'll see that we use a DHCP server on the DM touch along with an ID in order to bring the case controllers together. So as you can see here, I'm going to toggle through the, the menu system to find net. Within net, we have where we can set up what type of connection setting we're using. In this case, we're using IP-R for rotaries. We could set it to IP-L, and I'll show you how to do that here, if you wanted to make this a static IP address. But for this case, we're going to use IP-R. But to show you how to do that, go to A type and change it there to IP-L or IP-R. We'll leave it at R, and you can arrow out and go back out to the main menu. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the ID selection and set it up there. The ID schema on this particular controller is three digits, 100s, 10s, and 1s. So ID 1, as you can see here, is your 100s place. ID 2 is your 10s place, and ID, ID 3 is your 1s place. So for an example, we'll use this as controller number one. We're going to go ahead and hit enter and make this a one. And then we can back out. If we go to ID two, that should still be zero. If we go to ID one, that should still be zero. So that would make this controller number one. If you wanted to make this controller 11, we can go to ID two, make that a one. And now we have one in the tens place and one's in the, one in the ones place. If we wanted to make this controller number 111, we go to the ID 1, make that one, and now we have this addressed as controller 111. Uh, the same thing would go from 1 to 999. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here, go back out to the main menu, and move on to the next section. In this next section, we're going to show you how to set the type of controller this is going to be, whether it be a, a high temp or what we call medium temp application or a low temp application. So what you're looking for is type. And you'll go ahead and see that here, press enter. 
and there's two numbers you can choose from, a three or a four. Three is a low temp application and four is a medium temp application. That's all you have to do to change the type of controller and the default parameters for this particular controller. I'll leave it as a three for this example, but that gives you an idea of how that's done. And press enter and now you're done. Okay, the next thing we're gonna wanna do, now that we've set the type, is set up the units for this controller. And what that means is we're going to set the type of probe that we're using and the temperature range, uh, whether it be degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to unit, press enter. Now there's only three different types that we're gonna be setting up for this particular controller in North America. Uh, the first one is zero for a PT-1000 on a cel centigrade or Celsius scale. Uh, you can select one for PT-1000 degrees Fahrenheit or number 19 for NTC 10K2 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's U the U.S. standard. So we're going to want to arrow up until we find 19. And there you go. Go ahead and set that, and you're done. Now that we've set the unit, uh, the, one of the last things you'll need to set before we hit the parameter list is the pressure type. And how we'll do that is by going back into the menu and look for PRES and hit enter. And now you have two selections here to make. Zero leaves it as a, at a default of uh, bar, which is European standard. Or if we set it to one, that changes it to PSI. So we'll go ahead and hit enter and make that PSI. And that part is done. Okay, the last selection you'll need to make within this controller in order to get it ready for commissioning and startup is your parameter list. Go ahead and arrow down from pressure to parameter, hit enter. From there, you'll see all of your parameters. Uh, there's a key list of parameters that I will include in this video. There's a parameter list of the primary parameters you'll need to change in order to get this controller ready for startup and commissioning. Uh, that'll be included along with the refrigerant table. Uh, with those items, you'll be able to get this thing up and running and uh, ready for startup and fine tuning uh, just using this video and the steps I've provided. I uh, hope this helps you guys. Um, please feel free to call our tech support line or email us if you have any questions, and I'll uh, include those at the end of the video as well. Uh, thank you and take care.